Welcome to the MSU Deer Labs online seminar series brought to you by Mississippi State University Extension Service and the Forest and Wildlife Research Center. My name is Steve Damaris and I'm the Taylor Chair in Applied Big Game Research and Instruction at Mississippi State University. Thanks for joining me. I want to start talking now about a project that's also dealing with fire and it was conducted by our graduate student Rainer Nichols and he wanted to look at two different questions, the effects of fire phenology and stump sprouting on summer nutritional carrying capacity for white-tailed deer. This project was funded by the Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fisheries and Parks using federal aid money from the Wildlife Restoration Act, which is the money that's generated when you buy ammunition or firearms as a federal excise tax applied to those purchases. That Federal money is sent to the state agency and they use it to conduct research and management activities. Prescribed fire has long been practiced in the southeast and is fairly widespread within the southeast even today. The prevalence has gone down because industrial landowners tend not to burn anymore because of the liability, but many private landowners do still burn and this graph shows the prevalence by month of the year of when landowners conduct prescribed burn. February, March, and April are the big months, the biggest three months, and really February and March are the ideal months in which to do it. April is getting a little bit late, but there's some logistical problems when you have a lot of land that you want to burn, not too many people that are trained to do it, and during the winter time in the southeast we get a lot of rain so you have to wait for dry days to do it so it's hard to do it all during february and march which would be the ideal time april is after spring green up and so you really don't want to necessarily burn traditionally in april but it happens because there are you know just logistical constraints this graph superimposes the typical time when prescribed fires are conducted in the southeast with the historical fire prevalence. Historically, fires were set by lightning and by Native Americans, but lightning-based fires typically occur during June and July. This is a, a very different time frame than the traditional prescribed fire. And we think this is a significant change in when fire is happening and it might have to be having some impacts on our wildlife population. During the springtime, moving transitioning into the summertime, there's significant declines in the quality of forage. If you had listened to my nutritional ecology seminar series, you've learned this already. If you're new to this topic, this shows crude protein and phosphorus concentration within deer forages declining from May through into the summer. And same for phosphorus, declining from May through into the summer and early fall. There's a significant pattern of declining forage quality during and into the late summer. This is a potential problem because at the same time that that forage is declining, we see adult bucks putting on a lot of antler growth and that Antler is 50% protein, 50% minerals, and there's a rapid growth of an adult buck's antlers during this mid to late summer. And that's a heightened nutritional demand. If the adult females, they're pregnant typically, and they will be in the late stage of gestation or pregnancy, that's a very high demand nutritionally. And then once she starts nursing her fawns, that's a tremendous demand for nutrients, both protein and energy. And so what we see is this increasing nutritional demand from the male due to antlers and an increasing nutritional demand in the female due to late gestation and lactation. These nutritional demands are increasing at exactly the same time that those nutritional quality of the forages are declining. And so what we would like to call this is a seasonal protein mismatch. The nutritional demands of life processes, growing antlers, having fawns, 
is going up from spring to summer at the same time that the nutritional quality of forages measured by crude protein, phosphorus content, and, and a number of other metrics, that nutritional quality is going down. That's a potential problem. Well, we know wildlife are naturally adapted to long-term patterns. And the long-term historical pattern was summer fires related to lightning strikes. And so this late fawning that we have in the South used to be tied to some pretty good sources of post-burn plant growth. And so we're wondering if this seasonal protein mismatch is a byproduct of when fires are conducted. Again, historically during, uh, from lightning strikes during June and July, and managers typically doing it February, March, and April. So we wanted to compare the effects of a, a dormant season fire, which is typically when prescribed fires are conducted in the southeast because it's, it's safer on the pine trees and the weather patterns are, are more conducive to burning during the, the dormant season. But then there's that growing season time period that was the historical case. And we wanted to see if those two timings of fire differed in what they did for our deer population. We had nine blocks or replicates, nine different stands of pine trees. And within each stand, we had a third of it that was burned during the dormant season in March. And then we had a third of it that was burned during the growing season in June. And then we had a third that was unburned, the control, if you would. And so the, we were able to compare these three to see which one of those produced the best deer forage habitat. This graph shows late summer crude protein of deer forages. The control, the dormant season burn, and the growing season burn during 2018 and 2019. We did the burns during March and June of 2018, and then the control was not burned at all. 2018 was the first growing season after the burn. 2019 was the second growing season. So looking at this crude protein of moderate and high quality deer forages within the timber stands, these nine different stands that we treated equivalently, the protein content is much greater during the late summer in the growing season burn. That's because when you burn a plant down, you top kill it and you stimulate all new growth. And that new growth is really high quality. So the protein content in late summer in September is much greater in the growing season burn plots than in the dormant season burn and all certainly in the, in the control. Now the dormant season burn is not much different than the control plot because it's burned during the dormant season and so it doesn't really delay spring green up or affect spring green up very much. So we basically have that spring green up process taking place in both the control and the dormant plots. Then the other thing to notice here is in the second year those plots, those treatments are all roughly equivalent in the quality of the food supply on the land. If we look at late summer, September, phosphorus levels of deer forages, we see some similar patterns in that the first year, first growing season, summer phosphorus levels are greater in the growing season burn than the dormant and the troll. And then in the second year, we have a, a loss of some of that pattern. Certainly in the control, it's same from year to year. The dormant season burn is roughly equivalent, but a little bit numerically lower in the second year. Then that growing season burn is still high, even though uh, it's the second year after the burn. So we've, we've done some really good things from a phosphorus content in the deer forages in that growing season burn. Let's look at the biomass of deer forages. How much forage is there, the quantity? And you can see in the first growing season, there's not as much biomass in the growing season 
burn because we've come in in June, which is partway through the growing season, and burned it back. We've eliminated that biomass that had been growing since March green up. So we knock back the biomass. The biomass is greater in the dormant season burn than it is in the control because we have stimulate growth and knocked back the standing woody vegetation and stimulated new growth. And we've also put that, those nutrients back into the soil. So biomass is much greater in the dormant season burn compared to the control, which was not burned, and the growing season burn because we've basically knocked back those plants halfway through their growing season. Second year of the study, we found instead of just that first year dormant season, the second year we see a really positive effect on biomass in both the dormant and growing season fires. So that fire is has an excellent effect on promoting biomass of deer forages. Now if you remember the earlier slide, the crude protein level was dropped back down during the second year, but there's still a biomass boom from the fire effect. So the protein is not quite as high in late summer, but this protein is still good overall. And the effect of that biomass and reasonably good protein is shown when we calculated the summer growing season crude protein nutritional carrying capacity. This is an estimate of how many deer days a deer can live in your stand on an acre of land, or in this particular case, it's labeled hectares. So the, the actual numbers is not important as the pattern. The first year, the nutritional carrying capacity in the dormant burn was much greater, and that ties back to the amount of biomass. Even though the protein content was greatest in the growing season burn, there wasn't as much biomass. Look at year two, second growing season. We see the growing season burn and the dormant season burn nutritional carrying capacities are essentially equal. And in both cases, they significantly outstrip the carrying capacity in the unburned, the untreated control. So that's a good story. We've improved the nutritional carrying capacity in the first growing season from the dormant burn, and we've greatly improved the nutritional carrying capacity in both burn treatments in the second year. So we have this difference in biomass production related to timing of the fire only during the first growing season. Second growing season, we've got equal nutritional carrying capacity. Let's look at and see what the deer did during this time period. We see here activity curves based on photographs of deer feeding in the stands. We set up trail cameras in each of our treatments within each of our nine stands. So we have a whole lot of data looking at deer feeding activity. Now the black line is the unburned control and you see it was very low number of deer feeding in March, but once green up took over in late March, you have a lot of feeding activity in the unburned and you also have a lot of feeding activity in the March burned as well as the June fire treatments. So essentially in April, pretty much everywhere is pretty good deer food because of the spring green up. And in this case, the June fire hasn't been burned yet. So those plots are essentially identical to the unburned controls. The March fire was burned in March. So this is the next month, but you still see a lot of deer activity and you can see a lot of deer activity on that March fire all the way through May, but then the activity level starts to decline in the March fire and goes down to a low point in August, but that's still a lot better than the unburned stand in black. The unburned stand had a bump in deer activity during April, but look what happens in May. Because there's a stand nearby that had a March fire, the deer activity is focused in that area during May and June and not in the unburned area or the June fire burn because again, we haven't burned yet. But in June, we come in and burn. And as the deer feeding activity declines in the March fire treatment, it 
jumps way up high from the June fire. So if you're looking for deer in a stand on your property, if you have unburned stands, they're going to be in there early during spring green up. If you do a dormant season burn in March or February, they're going to be in those stands during April and May. But if you or your neighbor has a program where you're burning in June, look at where they're going to be in July and August. They're going to be in the better quality habitat to meet their nutritional requirements for late gestation, antler growth, and lactation. So in this survey of treatments, we definitely showed that the timing of fire affects the forage quality and quantity, but it also showed that the deer follow the quality, not the biomass. They're after the high quality forage and less so the amount of forage. So kind of summarize what Rainer learned from this project is the fire phenology or the timing of the fire affects the quantity and quality of the forages. And that first year growing season, nutritional carrying capacity is going to be harmed by the growing season burn. But if you vary the timing on your property or within a stand on your property, you can actually optimize nutritional carrying capacity during that summer stress period. The summer burn portion of your stand is going to be attractive to the deer and they're going to meet their protein and phosphorus requirements more readily, even though they don't have as much biomass in that treatment, but then they can fall back on the dormant season burn to get more biomass and fill their bellies. So these animals are responding quite readily and differently to the type of treatments. So the management implications of Rainer's work looking at fire timing is first off logistical. I mentioned earlier that dormant season fires are difficult to get done completely and that's why they tend to cover into March and sometimes even into April. Well, if you diversify when you conduct your fire, then you don't need to do all of your burning during February and March. You could split your time and do your March burning, February burning, and then come back and do the other half of your burning during the June or even July time period. So logistically, it diversifies, diversifies your timing when you need to be out there burning the property. And because it varies the effects on the nutrients, you can actually diversify the timing of your fire and optimize the nutrients. Where you burn during the growing season, you're going to provide high quality forages to meet the nutritional demands of late summer and on the parts of the adult bucks growing those big antlers that you want them to grow and the, the does producing those fawns. So the high quality forage in the summer burns and then property wide, if you're doing some dormant season burns as well, you're going to have optimized nutritional carrying capacity. So by diversifying timing, you can optimize your nutrients and deal with improved logistics to make your property a better place for your deer population to want to be. And if you have a small property, it's always important to give deer a reason to come onto your property. And we've shown you how to do it right here with some summer burns.